we got to talk about motherfucking transphobia, okay? Yeah, DM Panness Main on Discord if you want to, uh, if you want to, okay? All right, ready? Okay, everybody, for those of you who don't already know this, I am trans. <gasps> uh, oh no, mama, no. How can you be trans and a mama? As it turns out, you can, and you always have been able to, and you will be able to in the future. So don't worry. It's super fucking pog, actually. Trans people, turns out, pretty fucking awesome. I know, pog. But there are a lot of people in America who have been convinced that trans people are somehow dangerous. That they are harmful, that they are morally degraded, that they are dangerous, that they are predators, that they are perverts. They are all kinds of things. And we call this, we call this transphobia. Now, transphobia doesn't necessarily literally mean that you are afraid, like shaking in your boots afraid, of trans people probably yes we bury but it does mean that you treat them with fear mongering so much like how homophobia can manifest either as hatred or as legitimate distrust and fear and anti-semitism can do the same thing so is transphobia okay and we got to talk about some pretty fucking serious transphobia going on. Because right now in America, trans people are slightly insulted, demon. Why do you feel insulted? Where are the no pronouns options? Uh, there should be. You just, oh, it says right there, you just need to read. You just need to read. Let's read a screen screenplay. If you have a special request, you can either choose to not have any listed or you can specifically request for a special role from any mod. So don't worry about it. Just got to read. Listen, just because you don't got no pronouns doesn't mean you can't read. Just got to read. That's all. <clears throat> now, in America, trans people have become, I don't know how to describe this, but one of a small group of hyper fixated minorities where the right wing is just obsessed and i mean obsessed the christian right is obsessed and we talked about this we talked about this we've got even tim pool is doing videos about gender ideology and trans ideology now every single popular right wing figure is regularly dropping transphobic jokes is regularly just dumping on trans people, regularly arguing, and I mean all the time. In fact, Ben Shapiro, maybe we'll react to this. Ben Shapiro did a video recently called Debunked Gender Ideology, in which um, he made incoherent and crappy arguments against trans people while playing terrifying music in the background. That's like literally trans, that's like literal transphobia. Like he's literally playing scary music to make people afraid of trans people. And there's really no reason for it because believe it or not, I'm like the spiciest trans person you will ever meet. And I'm not even that bad. You know, I'm pretty good at insults. I could be a little funny, could be a little aggressive, but I'm not even that bad. I'm a fucking internet person. And I'm like the scariest one around. Trans people are not scary. You should not be afraid of trans people. Okay? But a lot of Americans currently are. And a lot of Americans are receiving an incredible amount of right-wing propaganda that tells them that they should dislike trans people. And here's the thing. You might think, well, why don't you just ignore it? They're stupid. Their opinions are stupid. As it turns out, Public sentiment and disinformation deeply affects the law. Good night, Crabe. And we're going to talk about an example of this, okay? Business, businesses 
will now be forced to post signs announcing that they serve transgender customers in Tennessee. Wow. Wow. Holy shit. The Tennessee governor has signed the cruelest anti-trans law in the nation. Tennessee Governor Bill Lee has signed one of the cruelest anti-trans laws in the entire nation, which will require businesses and public buildings to warn cis customers that they serve transgender people like any other customer. It is the second bill restricting transgender public accommodations signed into law recently by the governor and for the fourth specifically targeting transgender people. The new Tennessee law requires any building or facility open to the general public that allows trans people access to the bathroom to post a sign that reads, this facility has a policy of allowing the rest, the use of restrooms by either biological sex, regardless of the designation on the restroom. Governor Lee's decision to sign HB 1182 will cause real harm to transgender Tennesseans. The human rights campaign president Alfonso David said in an emailed statement, denying trans people the ability to access ba bath bathrooms in a consistent in a manner consistent with their gender identity is degrading and hu dehumanizing and can have real health and safety consequences. Governor Lee and Tennessee lawmakers are determined to discriminate against the transgender community and roll black back the clock on equality instead of focusing on real problems facing Tennesseans. To be clear, Tennessee residents will suffer economic, legal, and reputational consequences of these bills, and we will hold those who are indoctrinating hate into our laws accountable. The NCAA, 10, 110 corporations, and major medical and child welfare organizations have spoken out against this year's onslaught of anti-trans legislation, including Tennessee's bills, which, which has been dub, dubbed the state of hate, the slate of hate. Yep, unironically very similar to those exact signs from the segregation era. The college athletics organization said that it expects hosts of their sporting events to be safe, healthy, and free of discrimination. And the corporations denounced the bills, saying that the bills will affect their complex decisions about where to inf invest and grow. Governor Lee also signed HB 529, a law requiring schools to notify parents if sexual orientation or gender identity are going to be mentioned at all in a class 30 days in advance and gives parents the ability to opt their children out so they do not have to hear that LGBTQ people exist. One of the other laws bans trans people from multi-occupancy restrooms and locker rooms in public schools, including colleges. And another would ban trans youth from playing school sports altogether. So do you understand why I get mad about this issue? Do you understand why? We have a state in the United States that means that you have that that states that you have to post a sign if you allow trans people to fucking piss on 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 the on the site. We have a, a law that's going to ban trans people from even using the restroom or the locker room. I don't know how to tell you this, but this is a very very bad sign. This is a very, very bad sign, okay? Because Donald Trump is gone. We can't blame this on Donald Trump. Not that any of us ever did. We all knew. Trans people all over the country already knew that Trump wasn't the problem, that it was much worse than that. Well, here's the thing, CJ Oracle. CJ Oracle says, part of me is like, good luck enforcing it. Here's the problem. Do you want to know what actually happens when these things try to get enforced? Cis people get hurt. Because I don't know if you know this. Trans people get hurt too. But a lot of cis people get hurt. I don't know if you know this. But there was a study done recently on calls about people being in the wrong bathroom. And it turns out that most of the time, the people who were actually call, had the police called on them were butch cis women. 
butch cis women. Now, of course, it is, uh, of course, trans people will live a horrible time. This has an effect. Like, this is the thing. Im imagine if you live in a state like this. I just want you to just take a second, okay? I just want you to just take a second, okay? And I want you to think about what decisions you would make if you knew that you legally could be targeted for just having to piss. Do you know what most trans people would do? I think you would probably do this too. They wouldn't go out very much. They would disappear. This is the type of action that you take when you want people to disappear from the public eye. And I would be willing to say that currently, right now in America, there are states in America where there is a functional apartheid state with regard to trans people, with regard to the the type of clothes that you wear and the pronouns that you use. That you are not allowed to go into the same spaces as other people. And this encourages people to be watchful, to be hateful, to be ratting out their neighbors, to be ratting out their, their fellow citizens. All because of what? What? Because of what? Because trans people exist? Because I exist? But I want you to know something. First of all, this is going to hurt Tennessee, by the way. These types of laws don't help the places that they, that they install them in. Like, not at all. Not at all. Not only are they just bad for trans people, they're bad for everyone. No one, nobody wants to do business in a state where you have to pay extra money out of your pocket to put a sign up that says trans people might be lurking here and they have to do that. Coca-Cola is a corporation, okay? They don't give a shit, but they don't want to do that. That looks bad for their brand. Sports, uh, the NFL doesn't want to do that. Nobody wants to, Apple doesn't want to, nobody wants to do that. If they're going to be, now we know capitalism ain't exactly very good for, um, for uh, progress, right? Capitalism isn't particularly good on that, but let's be real. Capitalists hate spending money and they especially hate having their PR hurt. And if they have to put on every single one of their buildings, a sign that makes them look like fucking Nazis, which it does, by the way, having a, having a sign on the front of your business associated with your brand that basically says trans people walketh here. It makes you seem like you're the fucked up person. Because the average person doesn't know that the state passed that law. They're just going to see weird, creepy signs. What's next? Are we going to, am I, are trans people going to have to start wearing a pink triangle around? Let's write a screenplay. You'll probably have a better option asking on, on the website. So come on over to the website, demonmama.com forward slash live. But this is not the this is not the end. We have seen this. We, there was a bill in Arkansas. There's bills in Florida right now. There's bills in Texas, Tennessee. In fact, red states in America are basically declaring war on trans people. And we're gonna get. It's gonna get real serious here for a second. Okay, I'm gonna get real serious. Okay, real serious. Okay, everybody. I can tell you what the I can tell you what the actual sign says. The actual sign says, sorry, this facility has a policy of allowing the use of restrooms by either biological sex, regardless of the designation on the restroom. Okay. It's slash V Ziggy Richards for a vote. Well, that's not a surety anymore, J J CJ Oracle. I don't know if you know this, but the religious right controls the Supreme Court. This is fucked beyond belief, but this is hardly the first one. Uh, Arkansas banned medical care, literally banned trans medical care for trans people under the age of 18, even with their doctor's consent. Doctors can now be 
charged by the state for doing their for following their hippocratic oath and and delivering scientific care to children who need it in in arkansas and this is not the last by the way so like i said red states in america are declaring war on trans people and i'm going to be 100 percent real with you right now Again, I said this already, but I'm going to I just want to make sure that people know that I'm going to hit something hard. Trans people are going to need your help in the coming months. I'm serious. Okay? I'm dead serious. I'm fucking dead serious, okay? Listen to me. If there's one thing you pull away from this goddamn segment, from this fucking stream, from my fucking career, if there's one thing that you pull away from this, it's this is the time, everybody. We're here. It's here now, okay? We are at the point where if we don't act now, acting later will mean having to um will mean having to hide people in your attic. Ha hide trans people in your attic or 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 in your closet. Okay? Or under your stairs. If we don't act now, then a few years from now, I have no doubts where we're going to be, okay? And if you know your history, if you know your history, you know what I'm talking about. Am I serious? Yes, I'm motherfucking serious, Wasser D. I am dead fucking serious. I have been talking about this. I have been talking about this for a very long time, okay? You know what? I got a quote for you. One second. I got a quote for you. Give me just one second. I wasn't preparing to read this, but we're going to read this, okay? We're going to read this, okay? No, not that one. Nope, this is a different one. Let me see here. Let me find this. You're just going to have to give me a second. Just give me one second. Everybody be patient with me for one fucking second, because I got to bring up a little quote here that's very important to me, okay? How do I do this transcri transcription? Hold on a second. How do you, uh, one second, let me open this up. How do you open the... I need to open the transcription of a video. I don't... On YouTube, how do you do it? Fuck, I don't remember. God damn it. Why do they do this? Ah, there we go. Yes. Yes, I got it. I got it. Hold on. I got it. I got it. I got it. One second. I'm getting this quote right here. All right. In fact, no, you know what? I'm not even going to steal it. I'm going to let Jacob Geller read this, okay? Listen closely, chat. Listen the f fuck up, chat. My lovely imps and yet-to-be imps, my future imps, listen closely. And listen to this quote. This quote is read by Jacob Geller. And this is a quote from Ellie Vissel version of the golem okay listen closely because this is important okay let's listen writing these thousands of words better than i ever could and we miss him the golem more than ever, we need his presence, and perhaps even his mystery. As usual, the year promises to be one of punishment. I feel it in every bone of my body. I have lived through too many ordeals not to be able to predict what the future has in store. Oh, of course I have faith in God. I would not be a Jew if I did not have faith, but neither would I be a Jew if I were not afraid. I know that sometimes there are men who choose death because they wish to escape this wretched earth, which first bears us and then devours us. 
Ah, if only the Gollum were still among us, I would sleep more peacefully. Why did the Maharal take him from us? Did he really believe that the era of suffering and injustice was a thing of the past? Tell that we no longer needed a protector, a shield? Tell me, please, our Maharal who knew everything, did he not know that exile after him would become harder than before, even more cruel, that the burden would become heavier, more bloody? He could have left us his golem. He should have. What did he fear? And I have lived too many ordeals to not be able to predict what the future has in store. Those are the words of Holocaust survivor Ellie Wiesel, okay? Who survived the death camps. You understand? And when I tell you that there are dark times coming, if we do not act now, if we do not start acting now, then things are going to get bad. In what ways can we act? Okay? This is hard. Okay? No, I'm not going to keep playing it. It's enough. That's enough. Although I do think this video is very, very good. One of my favorite, one of my favorite video essays of all time. <sighs> there are many ways you can act. Next month, let me tell you. Next month, um, I'm going to be doing an entire month-long stream on trans and queer history, okay? I'm going to be planning, I am currently planning a massive charity, okay? That is, in, if, if it works out the way I have it planned, we will be di providing direct relief to trans people in need for next month. For Pride Month. But I am one person, Okay? I'm one fucking joker on the internet, okay? I'm one person, okay? And I need the people in my audience who aren't trans, who aren't trans, who aren't queer necessarily. Thank you. I would appreciate that greatly. I'm going to have to ask for some help. We're planning it long in advance. I've already got some people involved. It's going to be really good, okay? But if you're if you're here and you have something, be willing to consider sharing it, okay? Because I can tell you right now that in the coming months and in the coming years, there are going to be a lot of trans people desperately, desperately trying to leave the red states that are now just openly discriminating against them. And they will need to leave or they will die. And I mean that. You, Eli, Ellie Wiesel says this right here. I know that sometimes there are men who choose death because they wish to escape this wretched earth, which first bears us and then devours us. I don't need to re-quote the current suicide rates among children let alone trans children in America in the post-pandemic era. And there's a reason for that. As it turns out, when you are targeted and hated and discriminated against, when places have to put signs up to announce your private presence, to announce that you might be lurking on the presence like some evil thing when you were just a person trying to live your fucking life, when you were just a, a girl trying to be a girl or a guy trying to be a guy, when you have these motherfuckers out here acting like, ah, the transes are stealing our children. I don't need to tell you where this fucking shit leads, do I? Stop being so naive. Okay? And I don't mean to be fucking angry at you. I'm not angry at you. I'm angry at the world. And I'm angry at people who keep saying, oh, surely it can't happen. Surely it can't happen. And they've been saying that for years. While I, long before I ever got a fucking platform, was screaming about the state of events. 
about where things were going under Trump. Some of you know, some of you saw that clip of me on David Pakman. Oh yeah, that's a deep cut. Years before I ever started streaming. Some of you know, some of you who were there when we found that clip, I called in to David Pakman on the night of the 2016 election. And I talked about trans issues and I talked to David Pakman. This was before I was a content creator. I was just a listener. I called in as a listener and I talked about how I was very scared about the way trans rights were gonna go in America. And I was fucking right. And it went worse than I thought. I didn't think we were gonna get a trans military ban. I didn't think we were gonna get handbooks from the Department of Health and Human Services on how to spot trans people. So please, wake the fuck up and be prepared, okay? If you have a house, make a guest room, okay? If you have a house and you have spare, spare room, go to your local store, get a nice bed, and be ready. Because you might know someone soon who needs a place to stay, who needs a place to move to. There's a very fucking good chance that trans people are going to need desperately to get out. And if there's not people to help them, they're going to die. Oh, yes, absolutely, Yusef, this will be. This is, there is a, I'm, I'm telling you right now, and I will eat my fucking shoe if I'm wrong about this, okay? If I'm wrong about this, I will eat my shoe live on air, but there will be a trans refugee crisis, but no one's going to fucking pay attention to it. Okay? No one's going to fucking pay attention to it. I will make this a segment so you can send it to people that you know. Don't worry. No one's going to pay attention to it because we're a small percentage of the population until it's too fucking late. We're paying attention because, with all due respect, I love you all, but I'm telling you because I see it. I've been seeing it for a decade. I hope that I eat my shoe. I hope you're right. I hope I'll eat my shoe. I would love that. I would, I would, I would, I will gladly, I will eat it with a smile on my face if the world improves to the degree that, that we won't have a trans refugee crisis. But guess what? Here's the secret. I lied to you all. We're already here. We're, it's already happening. It's fucking already happening. We're already here. I never have to eat my shoe because it's already happening. It's literally already happening. I know so many trans people and they're fleeing because if they don't, they will live as second class citizens and it's getting worse. It's going to get worse. Soon, trans kids are going to be banned. What? They just banned trans people from public locker rooms. The next step is schools. Then from schools, what next? 60% of young homeless people are LGBT plus. Yes, I know there already is. That's what I was saying. That was the trick. That was the flipperoo. Sorry. Wasn't funny this time. Wasn't really funny, was it? Now, here's the thing. There's good news. Okay. There are places in the U S that are safe. Okay. There really, really are. Okay? There are places in the U.S. that are significant, that have laws in place that are hard to get rid of. Places like Washington. Places like New York. Places like, well, believe it or not, Maine. Oregon. Well, Portland, yeah. Even, you know what? Even California. Vermont, another great one. I'm sorry. You can say it's coastal elites, but whose fault is that? Whose fault is it? Whose fucking fault is it? It's not ours. It's not our fault that every trans person in the world moves to fucking Portland or Seattle because they're the only cities where you can actually get fucking health care and basic support where when you walk outside, people don't look at you and, and treat you like shit. Well, Lady Kalgani, you got to do what you can to survive.
and I know this is fucking hard. I have read they first they came. I know. I've read that before. But today is a little bit of a different message because everybody's heard that one. Everybody knows that one. One of the one of the so I'm gonna announce and hype this up a little bit right now. Okay. Next month, Pride Month, I am doing at least four history mamas okay so if you like history mama most people have never seen one most of my new followers have never seen one because i've only ever done one but if you liked my previous history mama segment you're gonna love what i have planned because i'm going to be talking about the history of magnus hirschfield dr magnus hirschfield the jewish doctor who provided who actually advanced trans science across the 1900s and his inst his institute was destroyed by the Nazis. It was one of the first acts against marginalized groups. I know. I know, Jessica Metal. I've been there. Yeah, I know. But the state... The, but we're talking about the laws, okay? I'm going to talk about Stonewall. I'm going to talk about the Compton Cafeteria Riot. We're going to talk about drag history and ballrooms. Void Storm, to be honest, most of the time, it is not the pissed off guy with a gun that you have to worry about. Unfortunately, it is the laws turning against us and slowly choking us out. That is the truth. That was the case even until until it it um, cracked over. Yes, I believe it did. Yep, I believe it did, Gayfish. The slow, everyday grinding down of people's well-being. The isolation. The poverty. The, the, the inability to get basic health care. And I'm serious. The ways that you can help is to be willing to give. To be willing to share. You might not have, you might not have a trans person in your life. But it's, it may happen. It may happen. Listen, do you think, real quick question, everybody, real quick question for all those who are still listening, for all those who are listening to me talk about this very serious issue. Do you think that Germans who were not anti-Jewish in, uh, in, in World War II, do you think that they sat there and were like, oh, yeah, um, I I I'm going to have a secret room for Jewish people to hide in? No, they did what they could. Did they, do you think that most of those people even knew Jewish people? Probably not. They probably were like, oh my God, Germany is killing Jewish people. Listen, if you need a place to hide, you can come here. They didn't know it was going to happen in advance. They just did what they could. And you have to keep your mind open to do that. That is what you have to do. And you have to keep your ears peeled. Keep your ears fucking open. Yes. I agree, Adorus, but that's neither here nor there. And it is possible. I believe it's possible that that we stave off the worst. I believe it's possible that we stay away from ever reaching camps or anything like that. But multiple states, listen, everybody, listen to me. Serious, okay? Listen, please, listen to me. Multiple states right now are trying to legalize or protect conversion therapy do you know what conversion therapy is conversion therapy is torture that is the camps that is the camps that we were talking about and in the future you might not see it now but 50 years from now 100 years from now people are going to talk about the states that had conversion therapy centers in them where children were tortured just for being gay or trans and those people in the future will go how did people not notice this how did people not do this? And it's because we delude ourselves. We delude ourselves by saying, oh God, it can't happen here. E even We say this even as states are pushing to legalize the torture of children. So please, stop being naive. I'm not saying that there are current, like that there are death, 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 you know, death squads roaming around the streets. But that's not what happened until it was too late. That shit changed rapidly in Germany. It's not like it was like like a, a million years of death camps. That happens out of nowhere. You have to get... And, and if you look at any historical right-wing authoritarian snap, 
any time in history. You want to know about it? Study Jewish history. You don't believe me? Study. It's there is little steps, little steps, little steps, and then they make the snap. And we are approaching the snap, everybody. We already have camps for immigrants. We've had mass death because of horrifically, horrifically greedy and arguably eugenicist practices from the pandemic. We are approaching the snap. Okay? We have police forces in every city that are deeply loyal to Donald Trump, a guy who literally signed an executive order banning all trans people explicitly from the military, a guy who ordered his Department of, Human Ser of Health and Human Services to issue a, mem a memo on how to spot trans people so that they don't, so you won't let them in to, to, to abuse shelters. And I really don't want to see it happen, but I'm not going to lie. Those of you who've been watching my channel know my thoughts about where things are going in this country, and it's not looking good. There are more Marjorie Taylor Greens out there, explicitly anti-Semitic, explicitly transphobic, explicitly homophobic. It's creeping up. It's everywhere. And if you don't believe me, you should just watch my watch my fucking previous content. I've been talking about this. I've been shining a light on this. If you don't believe me, have you been listening? Every right-wing channel is obsessing over trans people right now. Obsessing. They're putting out video after video after video. Canada isn't safe either, unfortunately. Canada isn't safe. We have a very, very, very strange situation in the United States where there are blue states that are unbelievably transpositive. For example, Washington just last week, just last week, Washington passed a trans anti-discrimination law into, into the law for the whole state. All healthcare has to cover trans surgery now. That's amazing. That's not going anywhere anytime soon. But we're in a weird state where the federal government can't seem to do a whole lot. And states are going like this. The red states and the blue states are peeling apart. And I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what that's going to lead to. I've never seen that in my lifetime. I can't tell you what happens when, uh, when America starts to balkanize. Over my people. Over my people. And yes, they are my people. Trans people are my people. Okay? Compliment bot BD. I have to disagree with you here. It just seems like unintentional fear-mongering to compare Jewish history to modern trans issues. Obviously, trans people have massive problems we need to correct and fix. No, trans people don't have massive problems. Society has massive problems with trans people. But I don't think they're going to be genocided, which is what it seems you're alluding to. Fun fact! I am going to be doing... I'm going to be announcing this. Guess what? I'm announcing something right now. I'm going to... I'm taking everybody's advice. Aristocracy, a Jewish streamer, and I are going to be doing a sit down together double research talking about the unbelievable parallels between Jewish history and trans history. Because I can tell you as someone who knows a lot about both, that there are unbelievable parallels. And real quick question. I know you probably didn't know this, and I'm not trying to blow up on you, compliment bot, but let me show you something. Do you want to know one of the first things that was targeted by the Nazis? I've said this a million times. Everybody already knows. The Institute for Sexual Studies run by Magnus Hirschfeld, a specific institute that was designed to study specifically trans people and gay people. Now, at the time, they saw those two as the same thing. But Magnus Hirschfeld's clinic was known, was known for treating trans people. And the book burnings that you've seen, you know that infamous picture of the children burning the books? 
That was the books of the, of the Institute for Sexual Studies. Secret stars. I hope this isn't dumb to ask, but what's the best way to direct money in your opinion for the current scenario? I don't have room for anyone, but I do have some money. Like, do you think charities are useful to this or is there something better? I feel like I should know this as a trans person. Honestly, one of the best ways you can direct money is giving directly to trans people. Indiegogo and, um, not Indiegogo. Y no, wait, GoFundMe. Sorry, not Indiegogo. GoFundMe. Yeah, I know. Hirschfield Institute employed trans people. It's wild. Okay? Those, 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 uh, GoFundMes, you can search for trans moving funds. And those I use, I had one of those once. When I was trapped, I raised money to help me move. And people gave me money. Those are ways that you can literally save people. Yes, come in. Oh, oh thank you. Perfect timing. Thank you so much. Ooh, this is a good one. Custom hand rolled. Thank you, Fawn. Hand rolled cigarette. There we go. Not a single drop of tobacco in here. There are organizations out there, okay? And one of the things I'm going to be doing... No, no, CJ Oracle, I disagree. We don't have time for that anymore. Trans people have been doing the calm thing for decades and it hasn't gotten us anything. It's gotten people sleeping at the wheel. Let's read this poem. I like poems, okay? I'm serious. Direct aid is often the, one of the best ways. Now, there are other... Ela Divine, the plans are already in place. I promise you, I'm gonna be excited. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hype it up. Don't worry. I'm just giving you a little bit of a preview, okay? A whole bunch of different herbs, okay? Here we go. Here we go. Hey, this is cool. Let's read this poem. Thank you, Herulian Hellhound, for the twenty dollars. We're gonna read this poem together, okay? No, it's not weed. It is. It's as medicinal as it can be. You must not sleep. By Arnulf Overland. I woke up last night from a dream so strange, a voice calling me from deep. I got up and asked, what do you want? You must not sleep. You must not sleep. It wasn't just a dream. Yesterday they sentenced me. Last night they erected the gallows. This morning... My time has come. The camp is full, cell after cell, cold concrete floors. We lay here waiting, not knowing who will be next. We scream, we groan. Nobody hears us, nobody sees us, nobody knows the fate that befalls us. You say that you do not know such evil does not exist. Decent people will save me. My brother, you have so much to learn. They told us to give our lives to save our freedom. And now that we have, it was all in vain. The world has betrayed us. You must not sleep. You must not go to your work, counting your profits. Use your daily travails to excuse your silence. You must not sit in the comfort of your home and say how you feel so bad for those dying abroad. You must not endure so very well the injustice that does not affect yourself. Crying out with my very last breath, you must not sleep. You must not forgive. They know what they do, fueling the flames of hatred and evil, enjoying the killing, taking pleasure in pain, wishing to see the end in an ocean of blood. I did not understand and now it's too late. My sentence just, my punishment deserved. I believed in progress. I believed in peace, in hard work, friendship, and love. Now I know that those are not prepared to die together. They die alone on the executioner's block. I cry out in the dark, if only you could hear, save your children for the world is burning. You must not sleep. Shaking with cold, I get dressed, I walk outside, the dawn is near, the gallows await. You must not endure so very well the injustice that does not affect yourself. You must not sleep. Thank you, Leah Bia. Thank you so much for the incredibly generous $50. This was written in 1936, folks. In 1936.